In 2001, Japanese animation director Hayao Miyazaki changed the world of animation with his world-acclaimed animation feature Spirited Away, for which he won the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature in 2003. The story follows Chihiro Ogino, a 10-year-old girl who enters a mysterious and magical world while on her way to her new home. When her parents are transformed into pigs by a mysterious witch named Yubaba, after eating at an abandoned amusement park, the little girl signs a contract with the witch to work at the bathhouse she is running in the hope to find a way to free herself and her parents and return to the human world. Along the way, she encounters various characters, including the mysterious Haku, who helps her in her quest. The movie is praised for its sense for detail, its complex and yet appealing storytelling, Despite this, many people will also tell you they like the movie but fail to fully understand it. In this video, we're going to discuss how language learning and more specifically knowing Japanese can help you understand some of the peculiarities of this movie. The original title of the movie is Sento Chihiro no Kamikakushi, which can be translated to The Spirited Way of Sen and Chihiro. This being said, why this title? After seeing her parents transform into pigs, Chihiro heads to the bathhouse to try to find work, as instructed by Haku. After a series of encounters, she ends up in Yubaba's office and pleads with the witch to let her work there. To seal the contract, Yubaba takes away three kanji in Chihiro's name, only leaving this one. As a result, Chihiro ends up working and living in the bathhouse under the name Sen. If you're not familiar with the Japanese language, you may end up thinking the witch came up with this name randomly. But it's not the case, as Sen is simply the Chinese pronunciation of the first character in Chihiro's name. The scene is probably the first example of the importance of kotodama in the Japanese culture, where it is believed that words possess a spiritual potency. According to this philosophy, when specific words are uttered, the concealed influence can manifest in diverse ways within the tangible world. As explained by Haku in the latest scene, by taking away people's names, Yubaba ensures she takes control over people, leading them to forget about themselves and who they are. This is why the boy urges Chihiro to never forget her own. But what about the second part of the title, Kamikakushi, which does indeed mean the spirited away? When analyzing the characters, the first one means God, the second one to hide or conceal. You thus understand that the sudden disappearance is the work of gods. To understand this, we need to go back many centuries. The concept of kamikakushi refers to the sudden and unexplained disappearance of individuals often attributed to deities, kami, in the absence of clear explanations. This term may have been used as a way to comprehend or reconcile the mysterious disappearances, especially when it involved children. Parents, particularly in historical Japan when human trafficking was prevalent, lived in fear of kamikakushi, as the risk of kidnapping was a grim reality. The title thus indicates that we are following Chihiro's journey through the realm of the gods. Speaking of gods, as the title implies, they play a most important part in this movie. The deities are present from the very first scenes of the film, especially on the road leading to the tunnel that Chihiro takes with her parents, which will directly lead them into the world of the kami. The family first encounters an ancient Japanese sedar, which stretches upward with a torii gate standing before it, accompanied by stone hokora, known as houses for the guardian spirits. They are the dōsōjin, who are Shinto kami, often found along roads, as they are spirits protecting travelers, pilgrims, and villages. These elements, which are presented to the viewers from the very first minutes of the movie, are deeply intertwined with Shinto beliefs. Cedar trees are held in reverence due to their association with locations where kami descended from the heavens in the form of lightning, establishing a divine connection that renders these trees sacred. In Japanese culture, the gods have maintained an enduring connection with the natural world, and they are often mere creatures with no peculiar power. The country of the rising sun is even said to house a myriad of gods, symbolized by the concept of eight million, in stark contrast to monotheistic religions. In Spirited Away, 
gods are omnipresent and the presence of this tree at the entrance of the tunnel offers viewers who have an eye for detail a good clue regarding the rest of their journey one of the many mysteries in this movie is undoubtedly the bathhouse yubaba describes it as a place where eight million gods come to heal their fatigue and throughout the movie this description appears to be accurate as we see the staff being particularly attentive to the needs of the customers however a deeper look into the japanese archives of the internet reveals another story According to many Japanese viewers, the bathhouse actually depicts some sort of huzokuten or brothel, stemming from historical associations between bathhouses and prostitution in the Edo period. Director Miyazaki is rumored to have said, To satirize contemporary society, we intentionally set it in a bathhouse resembling a brothel. This suggests that the portrayal of the bathhouse intends to highlight exploitation and mirror aspects of modern Japanese society. The satirical depiction of modern life is also further emphasized by the class division within the bathhouse, with the lower status employees at the bottom and the master, meaning Yubaba at the very top. In the earlier stages of his career, Hayao Miyazaki was recognized for his interest in Marxist thought. His films address capitalism and globalization, not outright rejecting them, but rather offering reflections on modern life through elements of historically Japanese cultural traits. Instead of providing definitive answers to social dilemmas, Miyazaki's movies focus on observing the impact of modern life on nature, while also unveiling the struggles resulting from the inequalities generated by the capitalist system. Consequently, despite the horror we may feel when being presented with the idea that that house may be a prostitution house, we may also consider the exploitation of children is still a reality in many countries. In the movie, several hints appear to reinforce this theory. In the scene that first shows the bathhouse, we can see this hiragana, yu, which is also the Chinese reading of the following kanji. This kanji means hot water, and it is also the first kanji in Yubaba's name, literally hot water old woman. Of course, considering this is a bathhouse, the kanji hot water is not particularly strange. However, in the Edo period, men often went to bathhouses to meet with women known as yuna or hot water women. The yuna were bathhouse prostitutes assisting customers. And guess how the female spirits working at the bathhouse are called in the movie? That's right, yuna. In the very first minutes of the movie, Chihiro's parents are transformed into pigs after indulging in a copious dinner at the amusement park without asking for permission. The predominant perspective among viewers posits that pigs symbolize human desires. This aspect may also be depicted in the physical appearance of the staff members of the bathhouse who, due to their endless greed, have lost their human appearance. Others see it as another of Miyazaki's criticisms of modern society, using the prime example of a couple from the bubble generation to represent the insatiable desire for consumption that has prevailed since the end of the Second World War. In stark contrast to her parents, Chihiro and the many generations of children she symbolizes, is depicted as pure and devoid of such desires. The scene also emphasizes the wisdom found in kids, as Chihiro seems to understand straight away they have entered a peculiar world whose rules are yet unknown. As explained before, Chihiro inherits her name from the Chinese reading of the first character in her name. However, the attentive viewer will also have realized another oddity in the contract Chihiro signs with Yubaba, and that is the spelling of her surname. Chihiro's surname is Ogino, spelled as follows in Japanese. However, when signing the contract with the witch, Chihiro fails to spell her name properly, and instead of writing this character, ends up writing another one entirely. This character is currently only found as a simplified Chinese character for this one, which means disease. The exact reason for this error remains unclear, and even led to fan theories suggesting that the girl intentionally misspelled her name as a precaution against potential difficulties in returning to her world if her name were taken. Thus, when Mei Chihiro was conscious of the consequences and purposefully made the mistake. However, other Japanese viewers opposed the idea, arguing that the scene showing Haku advising Chihiro to keep her real name hidden actually occurs after Chihiro has already written her name on the contract. Considering her age, 
It's plausible to suggest she simply made an innocent mistake in writing the character properly. Whether the mistake was deliberate or accidental, what is certain is that Chihiro's misspelling of her name prevented her from completely falling under Yubaba's control, allowing her to return to her original world. In contrast, Haku became a pawn for Yubaba as he lost the memory of his own name. This further underscores the crucial significance of words within the bathhouse and more generally within this world. Miyazaki himself emphasized this theme during the film's planning, highlighting the overarching message about the power of words in a contemporary world that underestimates the power of language. Words are will, self, and strength. He says. Another symbol of the importance of words is none other than the character of Kaonashi, or No Face, who also possesses some intriguing qualities. For instance, he lacks a voice of his own, instead adopting the voices of those he swallows to talk. The fact that his lower body is semi-transparent may also be an indication that he lacks a genuine sense of self. The inability to communicate, which is a defining characteristic of this character, suggests a lack of self-awareness. In a world where the power of words is significant, Kawanashi's inability to express himself positions him as a character devoid of personal will. Miyazaki allegedly elaborated that he envisioned Kawanashi as a representation of contemporary youth, stating, There are people like that who want to be with someone, but feel like they don't even have a self-identity. This may be another criticism of contemporary society where individuals are indistinct from each other, thereby lacking a sense of self. Kaunashi, portrayed as a selfless entity who only manages to attract others by luring them with money, and it is the satirical bathhouse symbolizing modern society, which further emphasizes Miyazaki's criticism. Towards the end of the movie, finding solace in Zaniba's house brings about a noticeable change in Kaunashi's demeanor, transforming into a more serene state. This shift likely signifies the discovery of a refuge, symbolizing a restored inner peace. It may also convey the message that, at last, Kaunashi has found purpose and meaning in his own journey. Another element of the film that viewers often find challenging to grasp is Chihiro's train journey. And spirited away, Chihiro's adventure encompasses shifts between various realms. Initially, she transitions from the ordinary world to the mysterious bathhouse, and later embarks on a train expedition over water, leading to her eventual return to the bathhouse and, ultimately, her home. Throughout the train sequence, the surroundings emit a haunting sense of emptiness. The passengers are portrayed as shadowy figures dressed in antiquated attire. What is the symbolic meaning behind the train scene? Some viewers interpret it as a representation of the afterlife. This understanding could be influenced by Miyazawa Kinji's novel Night Train to the Stars, where the main character, Giovanni, embarks on a journey through the Milky Way aboard a night train. The evolving storyline in Miyazawa's novel depicts the passengers as spirits reaching the end of their earthly journey. However, Miyazaki provides an alternative perspective, explaining the world inside the train is like the contemporary world we live in, a vast and boundless world. The perpetually moving train may serve as a metaphor for the ceaseless passage of time, symbolizing the relentless march of time itself. Boarding a one-way train signifies an incapacity to return to one's origin and a submission to the unpredictable journey of existence, devoid of the ability to control one's destination. Considering these characteristics and the director's likening of the train to the contemporary society, the passengers much like Kaunashi, appear to be depicted as entities lacking self-awareness. However, within this symbolic journey, the director communicates a meaningful message as seen through the train window, a breathtaking and otherworldly landscape of sky and sea unfolds. Miyazaki clarified that he portrayed the scenery to impart a realization to Chihiro. I wanted Chihiro to know that there are beautiful places in this world too. This conveys the idea that even in a challenging world where one must confront struggles alone, moments of beauty exist and amid the difficulties of daily life, positive aspects endure. At the end of the film, Yubaba offers Chihiro to let her go with her parents if she manages to tell them apart in a group full of other pigs, which the girl manages to do. This may serve as another indication that Chihiro didn't forget who she was by retaining her real name 
name and memory, she remained outside Ibaba's complete control. Consequently, she could perceive the truth that her parents were not among the seemingly indistinguishable pigs in the bathhouse. Moreover, emphasis is placed on the importance of Chihiro's declaration. My mom and dad aren't here, she said, indicating an enduring awareness of her true self. Having acquired the skill to navigate the bathhouse autonomously, Chihiro reaches a stage where she can flourish independently of her parents. The statement also conveys the symbolic significance of Chihiro's individual maturation. This journey of growth is also exemplified by the journey of Kaunashi, a new Baba's son who managed to overcome their solitude and fears by bonding with others. While there are numerous other facets of the film that could be further explored, this video does not aim to provide an exhaustive interpretation of every element. Instead, it seeks to convey that language learning and delving into culture in the original language can open vast horizons of understanding. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.